Hello everybody and welcome back to Peterville. So today is the day that we download and install the Massey Ferguson skid steer loader by Black Sheet Modding, which I am really looking forward to putting into the game. So, uh, yeah, let me just put this away first of all, then we'll take a flatbed trailer over to the store and bring it back to the yard. Obviously I could drive it down the road, but it would likely take a long time because I can imagine the top speed is uh, fairly slow. I can't imagine it can do more than well, 15 miles per hour, even that might be pushing it. So, yep, yeah, just drop this here. We have so much storage on this uh, on this map, it's really good. Uh, so, yeah, like I said before, there's no excuses for me to leave stuff outside since there is just tons of storage. Now, I think probably the skid steer loader which I'm putting onto the, the trailer, um, I reckon once I have unloaded it, I can then use the trailer to uh, transport the wall pallets to the cell point. We will see if that is going to be a viable solution to transporting them. But yeah, that is my plan. This is actually the bale trailer, so no, wrong one. They are very similar, uh, except this one has got quite a bit of paint loss. Uh, I think probably if I pressure washed it, it would actually fix that. I think I should do, because it's looking a bit old, even though it's pretty new. So it would be wise to get a pressure washer. We don't own one. Sometimes maps do start off with them. So I do like to check first. Uh, also today I need to uh, compact the silage. Mr. Sniff has just gone exactly where I was going to put that. Surprisingly, it does seem to make a difference. Anyway, yes, there it is. That is the pressure washer. Obviously very expensive, £4,500. Um, so, yeah, let's get it washed. I'm intrigued to see if it actually does repair the paint. If I just stare at some paintwork which has come off. See if it does fix it. Oh, okay, so it doesn't do. Interesting. So that must actually come under the damage. Though you can see the uh, service icon, bottom right hand corner. It does show that it's really not too bad. So I'm going to have to stick it in a workshop later and see if I can get rid of the paint problem. I do like the mods do that. They do lose paint over time, so this was a little bit too fast. But uh, yeah, you can't have everything. Overall, it's a very good trailer. How many times do I do that? I do that in pretty much every episode. Okay, so the field I was working in, I was going to say yesterday, but yeah, I said the previous episode because it wasn't necessarily Peterville yesterday, was that field just there. The combine harvester needs to be put away, and I need to bale the field. Uh, many viewers say just use a forager, a forage wagon. It's a very good idea. I do agree with you. Um, if I was storing the straw, Having it in bale form is much easier. But I don't think we're going to be storing the straw because I actually don't need straw on this particular map. Although uh, I will need straw when we have the horses, which I'm hoping to get fairly soon. Possibly today, but most likely in the next episode. Horses are coming soon. So yeah, that is my plan. Uh, obviously, using the skid steer today is not a massive job. All I need to do is put the, uh, the pallets either on a trailer or in a storage shed, it doesn't really matter where, just as long as they're out of the way because currently I've just basically pushed them with the tractor to an area out of the trigger so more could spawn uh, it, it really was a very low-tech solution I literally drove into them so yeah, this skin is still loaded by Black Sheet Modding, very interesting, it's an old machine um, it, it, I actually don't know when it originates from, but it is an old machine. Uh, there's many different customizable features which is nice, also you can change the color uh, also you can have a cab and not have a cab. I'll show you instead of just trying to describe it. Here it is. So yeah, this is obviously the cabless version. The Massey Ferguson 711. Seems like a nice machine. 71 horsepower, that must be where the 711 comes from. Um, and then yeah, you got a warning triangle. It's on the back. Trailer board wheels. Or is it Mitas? I've never known. But I think the uh, basically R4s, this particular tread with this particular brand looks very good uh, but there was actually another setup for the Trelleborg and that is a track it's very nice that's also very nice in fact they're all very good very nice uh, solutions there's some really tall t uh, tires actually but I think I do like this one the best at the moment design standard or sunshade forestry actually the forestry one looks very good uh, so I think because it's probably not going to be doing a great deal of forestry, I'm just going to have sunshade. The forestry one does, however, look 
Very nice. I'm actually tempted to maybe, even though it's not going to be used for forestry, I might just go for that because it does look very good. So, uh, yes, I have decided. Main colour, you can choose. You can actually have orange. I didn't realise you could have orange. So many different customizable features here. Well, I'm going to probably stick with the. That looks amazing. Uh, yes, yellow. The yellow just seems to me like the the perfect setup. So there we go. I've gone for forestry. It has still cost me twenty six thousand pounds, three hundred and twenty six thousand three hundred fifty pounds, and also I need to get some pallet forks for it. So if I've just gone to here, you do get these very decent ones, which I probably should color match. Okay, that would have been easy if I went for the red version. But no, I can't colour match. But that's fine. It matches the rubbers, the rubber wheels. Yes, that, that wasn't really what I was planning on. There we go. So yeah, I am very excited to use this machine. It does look very well detailed, as you can see. But obviously, because it's old, it's, it's a relatively simple design. But it's just so good. It's like it's been restored. High quality. I think I might have my thing down. There we go. Yeah, is it called a boom on a, on a skid steer? Because it's obviously really small. I guess it is called a boom. Loader frame? Not sure. Right, okay. Yeah, top speed of 12 miles per hour. I did say 15, potentially, but no. Not even 15. I'm not surprised. That is what I was expecting, really. So there you go. You can see the fan slow down and stop. And that is just perfect for my low loader here. The Lizard Low Loader. Uh, all links should be down below, unless I've forgotten. If I have forgotten, then basically go to the official mod hub and you'll find everything here. Everything I'm using currently, which you see on the screen, is on mod hub. The map, the tractor, the trailer and the skid steer. And of course the pallet fork is from the base game. Wow, it flew forwards. <laughs> that was some uh, fairly extreme braking though. Right, I will see you back at the farm once I have got around this corner. Please don't meet anybody on the bend. Please don't meet anybody on the bend. Phew, yeah. It's only a matter of time. The trailer really does cut in. Any trailer cuts in. Also, in the previous episode, I did buy this extra yard just here. In fact, I think I left my John Deere tractor in there. So that's going to be used probably for just storing some things. I don't think it's going to be used as an active yard as such. Uh, I'll just keep a few different machines, maybe some bales in there. And we'll visit there just once in a while, whenever we need to. But here we are. We are back at the yard. Yeah, this really is the perfect setup for getting through all these relatively narrow gateways. Um, yeah, I couldn't really be doing with the big low loader which I had on the lorry. Uh, the lorry was fine actually, it's just that particular low loader is incredibly large. You can get smaller ones, for example this one here. Right, so yeah, we'll turn the tractor off uh, and I will jump into the skid steer. I don't need the beacon on, but I kind of like it. Right, so yeah, it was these four. Now I'm not too sure if the pallet forks on the skid steer are long enough to pick up two. I know that on the telehandler, you can just about pick up two. So we'll see. If it can, then great. Oh, it can do. Nice. Yeah, so what is the current price? If the price is good, it's going to be sold. If it's not good, it's going to be put into storage. The price is pretty good. 2386, that sounds very good to me. Uh... Yeah, I think that's good because, yeah, what I'm used to with the good prices is eggs. Amazing. The eggs are just worth so much money. Used to be wool in FS17, but not as much. And they've also reduced the capacity of each pallet. It's now only 1,000 litres per pallet. Used to be two. At least two. Right, so we'll lower that down. I do need to stick it in the workshop as well. Actually, this is the workshop which is over here. Sorry to uh, bumble on a bit, but I do want to establish how you actually go about repairing the paint loss because I, although yeah it's a nice feature I, I do like to have a bit of pride in my machinery I like to have some uh, good looking machinery and with it being so worn it could do with a respray so if I can just get it back into here without crashing it 
without crashing it is always a bonus uh, then I can try and see if I can get it fixed okay so yeah you can see the condition is low so I'm guessing that the repair thing I was looking at before was the tractors if anybody has mentioned this in a previous episode then I do apologize uh, because yeah these videos have mostly all been recorded before many have been published so yes if you have said I won't have seen your comments because the video won't have been put out by then so uh, yes I have established it by myself which is, is good to know okay so let's just put this onto here try not to uh, lose any because I know that pallet on the end there is literally hanging on a thread but this is one of the main reasons why I bought the skid steer because this is actually going to be mostly uh, the sheep map for me whereas Oakfield Farm is my cow map we have loads of cows, this one we're going to have loads of sheep and of course yeah horses as well on here now I, I should have just put that in a better place shouldn't I I think I'll take that pallet anyway but I need to be fast because if I was to uh, not move this one and another one, no sorry if I was to move this one another one spawned straight away I still wouldn't be able to get to the other one so I need to just put that there okay we'll go for the two again, I hope, oh no one get two, I need to get two that should be better, yes two together uh, interior view you might be interested it's all very nice the levers do work so do the pedals and this is a really good trailer for doing this with that is very nice indeed right so that should be good enough don't want to go too far and yeah if I can do I'll throw some straps over it I think you can strap Possibly. Oh no, I'm flying. Uh, <laughs> maybe. Maybe not. I'm not too sure. But it should just hold itself in place anyway, hopefully. Um, there we go. Okay, so yes, I can now wait here. We'll wait for the next load. I think I probably will load it onto the trailer as we go. Because there, there are going to be many pallets of wool appearing. Uh, is there any way of strapping? No, no, that's going to tilt it back. I don't think there is. They, they could potentially fly backwards if I just brake heavily. Yeah, they do move. Uh, but that is fine if I drive carefully. They shouldn't fall off anyway. Uh, I think actually I should be using the bale trailer. This is this is a transport trailer for machinery. So if I use the bale trailer, you likely would be able to strap. It's, it's my fault. I'm using the wrong trailer. But it's fine. Like I say, if I drive carefully, there is not an issue. So, yeah, we, we actually do have great demand here. But that's a lower price than the Peterville factory. So we're off to the Peterville factory, which is amazing because, uh, yeah, the spinnery is offering a lower price. Yeah, I don't really know why I tagged it because I know exactly where the factory is. We'll head over there and we'll make a bit of money. It's not going to be a huge amount, but it is just a bit of extra money. But then I can pack up the combine and we can work on the straw, which is in that field. Uh, I think it is just going to be a case of bailing it though, just this once, because I don't have the loading wagon. Of course, I do need to also compact the silage. There's so many different things that I need to do. Uh, the thing about the silage is it's a very boring job, because I just have to drive backwards and forwards for the next 10 minutes. So yes, we'll pack up the, <laughs> the combine harvester first. Right, so on that bend back there, on that junction, the smear mix came around the bend uh, pretty fast. It did come onto my side of the road and sort of clipped the front of the trailer, made all my pallets go moving around everywhere. So that's why everything's looking a bit messy. Next time I'll definitely use the trailer where you can strap. It is basically the same trailer, it's just uh, you can indeed strap on. Um, yeah, I've never sold wool here before, so I don't actually know where the trigger is. I'm, I'm guessing that it is the same place just here, but we'll see. It is. Okay, that makes it very easy. Uh, £9,546. I have lost one, annoyingly. Just over there. It almost made it. Thought you could get away, didn't you? Well, you didn't. You must get into the sell point. It's still being reluctant to sell. Come on, you're going to a better place. Goodness. <laughs> How is it possible? Get in there. Sell. It's gone. 
408 pounds, but it was definitely worth selling at that price. Uh, so yeah, that is just a nice little boost. The money has been boosted. Uh, so I will see you back at the farm. Hopefully we have no more incidents with cement mixers, which I'm really starting to hate. There are way too many cement mixers. Love the variety, kind of, with uh, now having cement mixers, it used to just be cars, but there's just too many cement mixers. Okay, so yeah, time to put it away. We'll put it in the shed just here where I got it from. Obviously the skid steer can go with it. Keep everything dry together. Uh, we do still have the crone. Which I try not to reverse into. And there we go. Hmm, it really is nice to have the, uh, the storage everywhere. Uh, right, so yeah, as I said, the combine harvester is next. I can tow the header with the combine itself. So it's going to be a nice, fast, easy job bringing it back to the yard. But yeah, we, we just have to get this bailed at some point. Um, it's not even a massive job, it's, it's a very small job. Follow the combine's header up. And oh yes, it doesn't even have a trailer, that's what's even nicer about it. You can just literally... No, I don't want to do that. Yeah, you can literally... I've turned the heads-up display off. Uh, yes, I, I turned it off to uh, do a screenshot. So, yes, what I need to do is unfold the header. That's right, that should now... Yep, that's good. Drop it off. And we'll attach to it. Good. And yeah, because we, we have many empty sheds, so I'll just put the whole lot in one shed. It might be a bit too long to keep it all attached, but I do have tractors that can maneuver the header. And I also have walls to crash into. Uh, yeah, it, it is the biggest combine I'd want to have on this map, I think. But yeah, it's a good combine. Decent size. Not too expensive. Really nice header. And also the header does follow you quite nicely. Okay, that, that's just being rude. Although I must admit I wasn't indicating, so fair enough. Uh, yep, yeah, so we're going to put it in probably this shed here. This first one that we come across. Can I drive in forwards? Hopefully I can do. Actually, it is a really deep shed. Really deep. Which makes it very easy. Well, as I said, yeah, that was uh, easily done. Now I need my heaviest tractor. And they're probably all very similar. I guess the John Deere is the heaviest, which is just here, yeah, because I have the weight. Uh, so we're bringing that around the corner. It's currently in the extra overflow yard. And I will use that to compact the silage, because I, I really want to get it fermenting. I really do. And yeah, the front weights stick out quite a long way, so I need to be really careful with it. There's been many occasions where I have almost clipped cars because of the way it sticks out the front there. And you can't actually see, you can see the, the guide bar from inside the cab, but you can't see the weight itself. Yeah, so as I said, this next job is going to be, well, I, I don't know if it's worthy of a time lapse, actually. I think it's just worthy of a jump cut. It's me driving backwards and forwards over a pile of chaff. Yeah, riveting stuff. So, yeah, it's just one of those things that needs to be done. Uh, I thought I had wide tyres on this tractor. I must have stuck with the standard. Oh, yes, I did. I went for standard with wheel weights. So, I guess that might help. The weight might help, possibly. Um, but, yeah, you should see quite a transformation when I resume in a minute. It's currently only 28% fermented, uh, compacted, and yeah, obviously 0% fermented. And that weight is causing issues. So we'll see. See you in a second. 99% and there we go. No harm in continuing because it makes it look even better. But yeah, you don't have to. And that is perfectly good enough for what I need. So that is how many litres? 158... Uh, 185,000. Yeah, don't know where I got 58 from. Good. So the fermenting process can now start everything is within the boundaries of the pit so that's all good and now I can uh, finish off by hitching up to the baler after feeding our dog hello hello mr. sniff would you like some food hopefully not because <laughs> I can't work it feed there we go food food 
here's your food well, I'll get into the vehicle where you establish where it is there we go he's eating it yes yeah, so I know that many of my viewers are very pleased that Mr. Sniff has continued over from the Felsbrun series now I think I left the baler in the shed over there didn't I? I did with the trailer only red vehicles, red implements allowed in this shed uh, so yeah, that's why I'm driving a green John Deere into it. That was a joke, by the way. Yes, <laughs> just because there was two red things in there. Uh, anyway, yeah. So really, I've got to get this done. I really do have to get this done. Uh, I think I will use once again the bale trailer which I have just to quickly pick them all up. Should be nice and easy. I don't need to keep them. Ooh, must have been a crash down there. Hardly surprising with all these cement mixers. And, yep, yeah, then I can hopefully, by the end of this episode, make a bit more money from the bales, which I don't even need. The only reason why I'm making them is just literally for money. Yeah, unfolding first is good. So, yeah, it's a bit messy in the entranceway here. But overall, I've done it relatively neatly. Headland's always the worst. I always make it the biggest mess with the headland. But yeah, there should be plenty of bells firing out the back of the baler. So I reckon it'll take 10 minutes or so to get it done. Right, okay, so we'll drop off the last two. Actually, it's been pretty good considering it wasn't even a fertilised field. Uh, as for the amount of bales, we'll have to take a look. 20. Good round number. So, yeah, we'll fold up that baler and we'll attach to the bale trailer with the Massey Ferguson tractor. I forget the capacity, but I think it was something like 16. Was it 16? don't know. Uh, I think it was. 20 definitely won't fit, so it's going to be two loads over to the sell point. That is, of course, if we want to sell the final bales, which I think I do. Now the pickup is down. Okay, and yes, I'll go and put this back in the shed just around the corner. Have the beacons been on that massive frozen ever since I got back? I think they have been. Anyway, yep, there we go. That's undercover. So, the Massey Ferguson, here it is, the beacons can be turned off, although I'll probably need them anyway because of the uh, road work involved, but the bale trailer is just here, just in the shed here, so yep, certainly a full load, and it needs to be set up, so to do this we have to go to operating position, and that is all you need to do for that actually, but then when it comes to transporting, you have to go to transport and then you have to set it up to unload as well. But yes, overall it's an incredibly easy trailer to use. The thing that I always found was interesting is the way that it stacks the bells, but when it starts off doing it, it looks really weird, but when it's actually got a full load, it makes perfect sense the reason why it stacks them on their side. you can get so many more on. Yeah, so there you go, that's nine. Just goes to show that the uh, overall capacity is not 20. It is in fact 18. But yeah, it's two shores. Which is actually really frustrating. So I'll probably keep the final two just on the trailer. Because there's always going to be another opportunity for doing bales. Okay, that's 16. Those are the two which are going to be left just over there. 
and here is 18. Now I can, if I want to, unload these straight away to the trailer. That will put the mass of the bales back on the trailer, meaning it will become unstable. So I do need to obviously drive carefully. But I am going to do that, because it is just much more realistic. So, yeah, if I go to unload bells here, press L, there you go. Straps are on, looks good. But it is now incredibly heavy. Every bell's weight is now on the trailer, instead of it just sort of hovering above. So, yeah, it, it's absolutely fine. It's just you have to be a little bit careful when turning, because uh, it is, it's easy. It's quite easy to uh, flip it if you go fast, which is exactly the reason why I'm going to go slow. Just around the corners, really. Whenever you turn, that's when you need to be really careful. And here is the sell point. The Peterville Market. Yes, it's been quite a productive episode. I've managed to buy a skid steer loader. Uh, we might just about make the money back, which that cost. But yeah, I'm quite happy with that anyway. It's not like I need to make the money back because I didn't like it. Absolutely love it. It's going to be great for moving those pallets of wool and also it might be used in the forest, I just don't know I've just put the forestry cage on it just because it looks good but it's obviously not necessary for moving pallets um, yeah, it's actually a relatively good amount of money as well, but yeah, not hundreds of thousands, but you wouldn't expect that from a few bells, anyway, yeah I'll go back, get the last two, put it in the shed, and we'll call it a day, it's been good I always enjoy using new mods this trailer doesn't seem to weather at all, really. It's not got any scratches on it. And it's probably done just as much work as the uh, transport trailer. So I'm not too sure if that was uh, set correctly, the, the amount of time it takes for it to get damaged. But uh, yeah, it, it, I don't know. We'll probably see an update for it soon anyway. Most mods on ModHub do get updates over time, which is always nice. Right, so this needs to be set back to uh, the correct mode. Operating position, there we go. So I've already got the two. The field is cleared, ready for next time when I can bring a plow in here and get a new crop put in. So we'll conclude the episode here. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. And of course if you have done, please do thumbs up the video. Also subscribe if you haven't done already. And oh, I've just picked up some bells. On that uh, hilarious note, see you again soon. Bye for now.